landscape here is beautiful, yet brutal. It entices explorers, yet punishes the unprepared. You'd be mad to put a bike race through here, surely. Well, if you were so inclined, you would want a medical team rich in expertise, because when it does go wrong here, the stakes are as high as the mountaintops. Ah, oh, stupid. We have been kindly allowed to follow Nico Toom and his team of enduro emergency experts to find out how they provide the vital, yet often overlooked, medical safety net to these intrepid racers. Also, Neil says I have to buy Nico a beer on his behalf. He said he owed him a favour. I can only assume he jump-started his car or something. Five days of brutal racing, each day spanning hours in the saddle and with an accumulative descent stretching into thousands upon thousands of metres. As a mechanic, I wince out of empathy for the poor bikes, thinking of all that unadulterated abuse that they'll be taking. I can only imagine what kind of imagery it conjures up for a medical professional. So, who is in this team? They're certainly more than just a few volunteers of the Boy Scouts or the Parent Teachers Association. They're trained medical professionals who not only cover races like this as part of their 9 to 5, but also work on events such as the Paris Dakar Rally. Now, where's Nico and his team? The race is tomorrow, and I need to make an introduction to Neil's favourite doctor. Okay, and when, and every 20 riders? So the medics are just giving their morning briefing, kindly in English for us, although I've got a sneaking suspicion. They might be going over some points in Spanish later, but they do this every morning just to make sure on the day's plan. So we're here with Nico Toom, who heads up the medical team at this Andes Pacifico Enduro race. Now, Nico, if you could just give us a very brief outline of how operationally it works today. So we are five doctors and uh, one rescue man, and we're going to move after the racers during the stage. Each 20 racer is going to be one doctor follow them and then to the next 20 riders and so on till the end of the stage. So I guess that means that, you know, no one's going to be left potentially in a precarious situation for, yep. for too long. So we're going to drop in now. I'm going to follow you down to the first section. Yep. And uh, we'll set up camp there. Great. See how we go. So following the team down now. <laughs> They're already having fun. So you can see the tapes here. When it's yellow, it means there's nothing to really worry about in terms of it's going to sneak up on you. And if it turns red, it means, you know, be a bit careful because, well, it could get a bit more dangerous. Not only do you have to be a skilled medic, but also a skilled rider, carrying your own equipment and being able to get across all of this terrain efficiently because time isn't always on their side. So we've just stopped with Nico, and this is going to be where we set ourselves for the first stage of the day. Now this is where having mountain biking medics is really important. Up there, to your non-mountain biker, it might look like a pretty innocuous, pretty basic turn. But as a rider, we know how loose that is. You know how fast you're coming in. That knowledge is vital when giving support on a trail like this. Oh! Oof. I'm going to go slow some riders down. So as you can see, that pretty innocuous section we were talking about earlier on, that really didn't look like much. Easy to lose a front wheel, a rider's gone down really hard, and maybe within 10 okay. seconds, there's a medic there, a highly trained specialist doctor, and that's pretty remarkable. Is everything okay? Yeah. He crashed very hard, but he bumped on his head. He broke his helmet, but he hasn't has a loss of consciousness. De nuevo, good paso de largo, but well. Been the I have a huge scratch because I have a uh, fast compression, I couldn't handle my front wheel. It was uphill, but uh, it was going quite fast. Bit of an understatement, you can see the reduction in speed is like dropping off a cliff. 40 kilometers an hour to a stop in the blink of an eye. Yeah, uh, we cleared most of the uh, bad injuries. Uh, he feels comfortable, a little bit of pain everywhere, but nothing bad. So he's going to keep riding and we are going to be down the hill with him. Ah, he's the local. Ew. Ah, you. I have treated a lot of fractures on him. <laughs> <laughs> so you know each other quite well. And some conclusions. In terms of injuries sustained on course, mm -hmm. 
How much do you try and treat on site? So, uh, it depends if the riders can keep riding. We just leave it, make the basic things and, and do as much as we need to keep him riding. If it's very bad crash, we have to make some maneuvers and all that stuff. But yeah, we stop when the, when the rider can ride again and then make the final uh, treatment at, at the end of the stage or take him to the hospital or whatever. The whole Andes Pacifico has this amazing feeling to it. It sometimes feels like a celebration of mountain biking as much as a race, and that sentiment isn't lost on the medics. These guys are like a family, and that warmth is extended to all the participants. Uh, that is a good, a big family. Yeah, yeah it's a family. The last for you, man. Oh, thanks. <laughs> They'll get you riding out where possible and guide you to the bottom of the run safely. And once they've got that rider taken care of, it's straight to the top of the next stage to do it all over again. So, stay, top of stage two, on day three, a big climb. I'm with Palomo now. Hello! He's a really good rider, actually. Real fit, just did that climb with him. Super strong guy, he used to play rugby. One of the cool things about these uh, doctors as well is the amount of languages they speak. Palomo speaks three languages, and I think between them, they've got most eventualities covered. What they do when they have two stages back to back with a relatively short liaison, is they'll leapfrog one team in front of the other while having such a large team as needed. Nice view. Beautiful, a benefit of the job. Yeah, let's go there, enjoy. Yeah. Some of these guys will work on other events like the EWS, Paris Dakar. It's really, really impressive their skill set because you know, to be a top level football physician, you don't have to be a top level footballer. But these guys are absolutely pinned and could also help you get out of a spot of bother should you happen that way. I think it's a sign of how much the sport has grown that you can get features like this, you get races like this with this kind of support. You know, a couple of years ago when at the birth of Enduro, they'd have had nothing like this. It's pretty incredible. And it really does bridge the gap between racing and adventuring, you know? Because don't get me wrong, I mean, look at that. We are in the middle of nowhere here. For you to go up one side, you'd hit nothing but fresh air for quite a long time. And look down there. You might have seen Palomo there casually operating his radio whilst descending one handed. <laughs> covering just the rear brake. Good on him. <laughs> so we're here with Cristoval, but your friends call you Palomo. Yep. And we've just ridden stage three on day three. Yeah. Now, we at GMBN, obviously we're all bike riders. Mm -hmm. We all ride a lot, often with friends, and sometimes we get ourselves in English, we'd say we get ourselves in a pickle. In Things a pic go wrong. <laughs> uh. What would be one sort of trailside medical procedure that you would say is a must a must know for a mountain biker well there are obviously there's one main stage that you have always to take care of that you cannot put yourself in danger before because mm. you cannot be another accidented person yes. so uh, before everything you have to secure the the scene you have to be careful with everything maybe well if you do do some rescue you can you have to be careful with rocks yeah. or other Otherwise, mountain bikers yeah. so that's the first thing do not become a an accidented guy <laughs> yeah. yeah the second one is always to go and see the person and not to move it until well if the scene is secure and control the person and see if he responds hello are you okay no he's not responding so then you go and see if he's breathing or he, if he has serial collision. As simple as taking the pulse here in the carotid. That's very simple. Everybody knows, I think, or if not, they can learn in that moment. So we're sat down here with Juan and you actually have a really interesting role because you're part of well, you're an experienced, you know, raft and ski guides and all that, and lots of other sports. And you coordinate with the medical team to give yes. the best coverage, I suppose. And you have your backpack here. Yeah. Would you be able to just show us some of the, the of contents course. of it? Well, sorry for my English. I don't know the name of this, but this is for if we have a big problem yep. and we don't have a Ellie, yep. a chopper, uh, we must carry the guy. Oh, wow, yes. Okay? And we open this, okay? And we use a rope yes. and we can carry a guy. Oh, so you can get people off the mountain. Yes, yes. yes. My lunch. <laughs> Necessary. Yeah. Most important part. 
and this is the rope and the tools. I have 70, centim 70 meters of rope, wow. okay? And I have all the, the tools I have, uh, carabines, yep. another rope, because if we have a problem to give the rope for the guide, you have to... this one I throw 20 meters, and we have an, uh, it's a shoot of the rope. Yes. Okay, and this is all, it's heavy, but it's necessary. We have the lucky, never we use it mm. in Andes Pacifico, but so if we have a if problem, you need it, it's there. Yeah, we have everything. Sure. Uh, Henry, uh, can you put everything in the bag and keep and take the bag going down? Yeah, because sure. Because I'm really tired. What now. is it, one or two kilos? Okay. Yeah, yeah, one or two, maybe three. Three kilos. Okay. We'll see how we go. Thank you, man. Cheers, buddy. I left you everything here. Yeah, no worries. And I'm going with my friends to cool. drink beer. I'll enjoy okay. the sandwich. Or are okay. you taking that? Thank you, man. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Right then, I guess I'll... Oh my goodness! Jesus wept, you be... I can't even curl that! And we'll change my mind. I'm tired too. So dropping in with Juan's backpack. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sat so much deeper into my suspension. I wonder if he's... Got his setup specially for it. This is. Oh my god, how does he do this? Jesus Christ. It's just so hard to even do the most basic maneuvering. And this isn't even with water in. This is an empty in that regard. Oh, that's loose. Oh my god, my legs are getting so fatigued. Whew. Bit of a sit down. And you can just feel like trying to turn the bike. It's just squirreling and shifting underneath you. So, oh my God, my legs are so tired. So we made camp for the evening after what was a spectacular day of riding. Behind us stands the Donahue Ring. I don't know why it's named it, must be a coincidence. It was an early start and I mean, it's nearly 10 o'clock. It's a late finish as well. But these guys are so determined to provide just such an excellent level of care to all the competitors. I just think it's fantastic. It's been absolutely fascinating. I want to just extend my gratitude to Nico and the team for letting us come on board. As always, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know in the comments what you thought about the video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Cozy. It's very warm. Yeah, you see, you see. Now you're taking some sun and vitamin D for you. I think I've had enough. I think I've had enough sun for one day. <laughs>